Hello, I'm Jacob from White Shadow Digital and today I will show our new 3ds Max plugin, the Desk Generation 4 Automatic Character Importer. We all know that the integration between Pulsar and Autodesk 3ds Max is not that great all the times. For many users, solutions like Pulsar Fusion are just not enough as they would like to have more control over the imported mesh and doing everything manually can be quite tedious. However, there are solutions like our new plugin that can speed up the process and make it much more user-friendly. First, let's go into Poser. Death Generation 4 ACI works with both Michael and Victoria characters. Here, I have a generic Victoria 4 character with some textures applied to her. You can also load morphs and deformers, as long as you preserve all the character's body parts, the plugin will work. Let me just pose her a little, so we can see how easy it is to set the pose in Poser and then work inside 3ds Max without seeing. Now, when I have the desired pose, I'll export my character. Click File, Export, then Wavefront Object. Select Single Frame. Here we have all the body parts that makes our Victoria 4 character, as well as ground plane and other figures like hair or clove. You can have them exported as well, or you can have uncheck them here if you want to. In export options, make sure you have three options selected. Well body part seams, include body part names in polygon groups, and include figure names in polygon groups. I will just override my previous file, in that case Kate object. Now, let's go into our 3ds Max scene. I will just reset the scene, so we have a fresh start. We are ready to import our character using File, Import Options, then selecting the exported file. Here we can see that all the body parts are listed, as well as any additional figure we exported. Make sure you import your character as separate meshes, not a single mesh. And make sure you have selected Flip ZY axis and make sure you have texture coordinates and smoothing groups preserved. As for the scale, use real world units and import scale at about 200 to 250. Let's give our character a unique prefix. This will allow us to have as many imported characters as many unique names are we able to think of. Click Import. Now, I'll just delete the ground plane as we don't need it for now. As you can see, our character is split into many body part meshes and we hardly can work with this at all. We could attach them manually by going into the modify panel and selecting attach but that would leave us with a single mesh with multiple elements inside. We would have to weld it and then continue our work. If we open our new plugin, we will be able to do all of this automatically. The first step is making sure the plugin's syntax matches the syntax of the figure names of the character we desire to work on. Here it is Kate, figure 1, abdomen 2 and in this plugin figure 1 abdomen 2. Let's add a prefix, in this case kate underscore and then change the suffix from underscore 1 to underscore 2. When the syntax match we just click on prepare mesh button. We end up with a mesh that is attached and welded in appropriate parts. The only floating elements are her nails, eyeballs and so on. When we want to assign a material, we can just select a material slot and click Create Material button. It creates a multi-material template that exactly matches the IDs that our mesh will be using. We have various named materials like torso, limbs, face and so on. These are just standard materials, but you can override them with mental ray, V-ray or any other material that you like. When I assign the material to our mesh and we zoom in a little, we could see that something is quite not right yet. We can see this pink area here as her white lips and cream eyes. 
To illustrate what's going on a little better, I will bring a material that I have prepared before. This was created by using the template material created by our plugin, just with some diffuse textures assigned. The structure of the multi-material is identical, the only difference is that we already have some textures imported. Those textures are just standard poser textures without any other mapping tweaks. When I assign this material, we can clearly see the problem. Our mesh is almost stopped with mapping that does not correspond to what we see in poser. When we select a polygon inside of the mesh, we will discover that there is tear material on her face, face material on her eye, eye outer material on her lips, and limbs material on the back of her skull. This happens every time when you use the wavefront object format and can be fixed by manually reassigning the polygon material IDs of each polygon that is badly assigned. This would take a lot of time and effort and could be quite troublesome in hard to reach places. For example, when we have one of our joints bent and some of the polygons are overlapping. This is when we use the second option of our automatic importer plugin. Just click on the mesh you want to fix and click paint material IDs. In a second, we have what would take us a lot of time. After this, all of the materials are assigned correctly without any odd places. It looks like just the one inside Poser, with the same pose and the same textures. If you want, you can speed the process even further by using the Prepare plus Paint option that does everything we did before in just one easy step. Let's give it a test. Let's reset the scene once again. Import our sample body material. Import our character into 3ds Max. Prefix it Kate underscore. Delete the ground plane. Open your Imperter plugin. Fix the syntax to match our mesh. And finally, click the Prepare plus Paint button. The last step is to assign the material to our character, and after that, we're all done. As you can see, using White Shadow Digital's DAS Generation 4 Automatic Character Importer is easy, efficient and fast. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This was Jacob from White Shadow Digital.